And you are here at Dreamation today, your first time? Uh, my first Dreamation was in Dexcom last year. Okay. Very sorry. So here at your table, you've got some homemade items that are free for costume shops and my little pony in particular. Alright, so what made you feel the, the um, desire to start building props? Um, as a cosplayer, I know sometimes it's like very hard to find exactly what you want, uh, especially in like decent quality. You know, if you find things online, sometimes it's not good. I sew all my own stuff unless I know somebody that does it better. And I know how to, for instance, the polyester resin casts, I know how to do that already. So it's just a process of figuring out how to do it the best. And how are you going to be a tenant in a row? Well, if you're cosplaying Kyoko from Quella Magica, you would just hear it coming right here in the opening of the costume. Okay. And um, the My Little Pony Harmony Beatles, of course. Um, now, bronies are obviously their own subculture, but what other people are really interested in the uh, cosplay elements of your ponies? Is it just kids? or? Uh, I've had all ages be interested in it. I have, um, I have, I have, I don't have them with me, but I've done the crown too for Twilight Sparkle. I've had so much. Of well, she was that. just coronated, so go Twilight Sparkle. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, all right. Well, where can people find you online? Um, uh, my your Etsy is uh, a K A R T O S, or you can find me through my Tumblr, which is AdelineLime.tumblr.com. Okay, so I am here with Cooper and Jason, and they have a particular type of mark. They've also made this amazing giant head. And um, Peter, how long did it take you to make the dragon? Uh, all total about 28 days. 28 days. And it's obviously not your first time working in foam. No, actually it's not. Uh, I actually learned how to make foam with uh, the Jim Henson Company back in the 80s. My uncle was uh, Jerry Nelson, who passed away uh, recently, but he was the voice of Sergeant Floyd Pepper and a lot of the others. So I would get a chance to go over to the Jim Henson workshop and I learned how they made stuff out of open cell phone. Miss Piggy and he have the common ancestors. <laughs> About that. He, he, was, he wasn't pointing at me. <laughs> Most assuredly not. <laughs> so, um, is this your first three major? Actually, yes it is. Uh, so, how's your experience? It's wonderful. only like day two. Uh, for us, it's day one. We, day we got one. here of uh, yeah, 11 something this morning, and it's been awesome. Lots of awesome people to meet. Had to put together the rack really quickly. Yes. <laughs> and we got a lot of positive reviews from me walking around with the head on, so. Right. They've already um, crashed a wedding with the head. <laughs> I, the mother in law asked me to. So. so technically not crashing. Well, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you were invited. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> the groom didn't seem too happy to put his head in my jaws, but uh, I got the picture for it. Fresh? Yeah. So where are you from? I'm actually from Wayne, New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. So your first time going back to the Yeah. Well, welcome here. Thank you very much. <laughs> and um, what other things do we have planned for the uh, Like, doing something tonight at midnight? Midnight, at 4 o'clock at Learning Center, we have a uh, dungeon crawl going on. It'll have everything from combat to role playing to puzzles to trap mod actually. So, get more get people go out when the uh, vines snap. <laughs> no actual pain involved. It's just... So, what does a beginner need to know? Um, safety first yeah. is always our primary rule. We use buffer weapons and starting to use latex, which is it's nice to work with. But uh, the idea is that you should not be able to get hurt with things unless the, the person is really not paying attention. So for us, safety first is always the, the first rule. And then uh, really it's learning to have fun, uh, to just interact with people in a way that uh, is safe, fun, enjoyable, and a little bit of what we call cheap therapy. Cheap therapy. Well, I was just going to ask you about the bad therapy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I think you can actually, what, is it cheap therapy on YouTube? Yep, cheap therapy is on uh, YouTube and also our website. Uh, Random.com is one of them. Also, lionslarpnj.com. <laughs>
Well, thank you very much for all your time. Thank you. Good luck finding things later. Oh, we will. We will. I mean, and after the first three times at Gen Con, the only thing left to do is to go through the dealer's room and see all the new stuff, because a lot of times you run the same events over and over again. Whereas here I come and I play an indie game, and I get to role play, and I get to meet new people, and I really get to experience a fun game. How many games do you own? Uh, a lot. <laughs> I mean, a lot. Um, it came to the point that everybody's like, oh, what, what games do you play? I'm like, oh, could you phrase it as what games don't I play? Like, I actually bought a house just to be able to play games. To host it. So is that what you do, like, maybe like once a week, have people um, together? I used to, yes. I used to, but because of life and everything, I've been way too busy. So, like, this is my time to be able to get out and role play. And fortunately, um, I am going to call my friend and tell him that he needs to set up a role playing game in San Francisco via Skype. Right. See how that goes, but I have cocktails via Skype too, just with my friends. So that yeah. happens. So we we're hoping that you know we get together and we play games, and uh, when we get a chance, you know, I also play Magic maybe once a month if I can. Enough the time well, I again, want. I've got so much stuff in my pocket. But that's the great part about a game is that it's a yes. yes. block when you have that time. Right, and see that was the thing is I always felt that certain uh, things like Monopoly and D&D &D, that they just felt like they took all day. Yes, if you want to play a game that takes all day, play Diplomacy, six hours is not enough of a game. Yeah, a risk where you'd have to like leave the board and walk away and come back in a week and it's <laughs> still going. So, um, but these games I've noticed they really have uh, found an efficiency with designing yes. them so that they fit into uh, you know an afternoon and then you can still have your life. Well, I think a lot of the games are going towards that smaller block of time because kids are growing up with less attention spans. They don't have the attention spans that we used to have. We could sit for hours on end and do something productive. Now kids are you know busy, busy yeah. and. 
like that. They want to play stuff on the equivalent of video games where it's immediate and your game is quick or whatever. Even video games are getting smaller and smaller in time with your campaigns. Right, so do you do um, video gaming? Yes, I do. Well? I do mostly video gaming because that's all I have time for when, I'm, when I come home from work. I go to the gym, then and I come portable. home, and it's very portable. Very portable yes, these days. yes. Um, do you have a favorite genre? Are you like, do you like the horror versus the superhero and zombies or? I like anything with this. I like anything with a story. I'll play anything with a story. If the story's good enough and it intrigues me, I'll play it. And let's see, have you noticed any movies that have done really good adaptations of games that you like? Um, but that's, I, that's a hard one because it's kind of scary to go into a, to a game, especially into a role playing genre like, like Serenity or um, Star Trek because when you see your favorite movie adapted into a role playing game, you don't necessarily go with the expectation of being like the captain or being the cool guy, but you don't always get that because they have to, they can't just take from what's been out there, you have to go with something that's not been out there, so you go in there where you're like, well you're, no, you're Joe Schmo, they has to make a name for themselves and sometimes they're like, so you might be a red shirt. Yeah, you might be a red shirt. <laughs> okay. Well, I will let you get back to your busy gaming schedule because I know she's like literally booked every single minute of the entire weekend. So I try. Thanks for your time, Mrs. No, Nemo. Thank you.